Okay. How's it going, Harry? <laughs> Um, Mr. Mr. John wants to, uh, West wants to, uh, philosophize on something, so we're gonna right. swing over to him. Well, yeah, we're, we're trying to be here, uh, three just men, probably one other here, present, in spirit anyway. Uh, we're trying to resolve some way to move our society forward without harming anybody, and doing it in a peaceful and intelligent manner that, uh, addresses, uh, some of the issues that, uh, um, my friend Sam here uh, is uh, uh, reading and uh, so far he's got a little way into it and anything in there Sam that has struck you that uh, uh, like for instance the, perhaps the heading did, did you just read that off just read that off uh, a so declaration of independent evolution leave your thought. voice up a bit so we hear a declaration of independent evolutionary thought and constitutionally permissible uh, political actions for consideration by all Canadians. Hey. Right. So, uh, uh, what what that what I've been proposing for a large number of years, and this is an old style, uh, back to 2003 anyway, uh, is that we have electoral reform. What do you think about that as an idea, Sam? Um, well, I have to admit, I'm not the most politically hip person when it comes to our current system of government in Canada, but I do have to admit it appears as though the primary concerns of the voters are either not be met, being met, or the voters are dramatically misinformed as to what their primary concerns are, which is a concerning issue in itself. You don't want the concerns of the public being that easily manipulated by the media and the government together. In just in a little, my opinion about not having enough power in society via the media and changing public standards via media and things like that, I'd, I'd say there's more to be discussed. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I have uh, I have this uh, vision. Uh, have this vision. Uh, in 1975, that I've talked about for a number of years and. The more I talk about it, the more real it becomes in my mind, because at the time it was an overwhelming experience, but I've sort of unwound it, like listening to this tape over and over, and this, this thing in my mind, and I saw that we would come to peace and harmony, and really it would all have a foundation right here on the west coast of Canada, in fact in Vancouver, right? And, and when I had that dream, I was in Terra Nova in Richmond here, when suddenly my life had changed so much for the better after years of you know struggling with it, with a family and all the confusions that there were even in those days for people who were not well situated socially or economically in the society, people who were struggling to uh, take care of a mortgage and so on. So, so that struggle of uh, the the, the uh, outcasts, I guess, of society who for one reason or another didn't want to fit into the common mold and the common mold at that point was you know just keeping your mouth shut about things like honorable settlement of the aboriginal people for instance was a big issue if you if you dared mention that publicly around vancouver it didn't matter where you were from you know the, the neighbors would be knocking at your door and telling you to leave that can of worms alone you know and uh, and i re i thought about that for years and i thought well you know if you're not not going to go fishing and you have a can of worms, the best thing you really can do is throw them back into the earth where they'll find their proper home and do some good rather than rotting in an old tin can. So, you know, I've always believed that honorable settlement is the primary focus of what I see as a mission here because by doing that we cease to be a series of nations, we become a people, a Canadian people. And, and as a Canadian people, unified around some ideals like let's stop lying to one another let's stop cheating on one another let's stop being kind to you know our our animals and not kind to our friends you know and i think these kind of changes are are vital necessary and actually will happen and will bring about a renaissance and that's why i i say these kind of things because they're becoming more real in my mind and uh, harry and i we have can both agree on one thing, however. One thing. One thing. Marijuana what? is medicine. But that's right. And you know, for years my family disapproved of me because I used marijuana when I gave up alcohol. And at that point, uh, I felt shamed and, uh, you know, I would go into a corner and smoke my little weed and then try and come back and enjoy the company of all these drunks, right? And 
And then, and, uh, and then one day, I, I said to my son, who's been on medicine for whatever he's had, all these years, I said, well, it's my, my medicine, Toby. And he went, oh yeah, that's right. And from then on, I felt like I'm liberated. But I've never seen it as a medicine. I've seen this as a sacred herb. I've seen this as a way of connecting ourselves to enlightenment, individually and collectively. And I think that is the nature of this herb. This is a power beyond... This is the second thing that we agree upon. This is about the second this thing that we agree upon. That this is a sacred herb. And it's not just something that people should cast off as a mere drug. It is not a drug. Because medically and, and spiritually, it is called adiophorus. That is the word for it. And it means to say, like probity, it's a word which is hidden. But it means to say that it is not prescribed in medicine as a drug because you cannot determine the outcome or results and and it is and it is not oops Harry <laughs> I still got you it's going for the angle <laughs> yeah <laughs> good action Harry uh, yeah, great um, um, yeah and uh, that's very good <laughs> I tripped him out because I tripped out. I love out. it. <laughs> it's great. That's great, man. I love it, man. That's good action. See, uh, this is natural, Robert, right oh, there oh, with oh, a yeah, smile. This, See, this, this when is, you make him think, yeah, he talks too much sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. How about you? Sam, do you think that marijuana is a medicine? I think that it can be used as a medicine. At the same time, I think it's like anything else. There are certain limits to it, and for reasons of genetics, random mutation, and chance, some people should probably not use it as frequently as others. Um, I think that on the whole, it has no serious negative side effects. Uh, it is habit-forming, which is a far cry from addictive. Um, but on the whole, if you're in a financially stable situation, and as you are an adult and you've chosen, as many people in North America do, to indulge in an intoxicating substance, or uh, if you need it as a form of medicine, then by all means, go ahead. And if you have the lungs that can stand to smoke it, and if you're not too concerned about detrimental side effects, then burn it with, you know, fire. Uh, if you are concerned about health effects, there are other things that you can do to use it as an inhalant, or there are other forms you can ingest it in. Um, there's not a huge reason not to use it. How about uh, uh, marijuana being a sacred herb? Um, sacred depends on your stance. I wouldn't force anybody to call it a sacred herb. I wouldn't call it myself a sacred herb, but that's just because I'm still working on my definition of sacred. Ah. Um, but. By all means. So more discussion later. More discussion later. There but we go. As far as I can see is that we have to look at this thing met metaphysically. And we have to say, before we talk about mysticism, religions, or, or belief systems, we have to deal with things in a materialist way. <laughs> Leaving aside social things like the current idiotic prohibition, which influences everything you've said, uh, and, mm. and still keeps us in the same boxes, the status quo, the way things are without much hope for any change all of which I deny and I blow away a bunch of feathers, right? No, it's not going to be that way. The future is quite different. And it's quite different because we, we collectively, people with, who can see somewhat into the future and can agree about where the future might be going, uh, have reached a sort of critical mass in terms of the projection on the future. And as the projection on the future says, yes, we will end prohibition. By ending prohibition, we will bring about a whole different metaphor of relationship People will begin who only do alcohol now because that's acceptable and righteous within their religious group or some social group. Now we'll be able to use marijuana comfortably through cookies, medicines or whatever. People will be healthier. And so in other words, it, it is a profound importance that we all apply ourselves very diligently to ending this prohibition. And as long as we have this psychopath, uh, regretful, uh, driven by these lunatics, idiots is what John Lennon would call them, and I still call them today, right? People who really have no idea but just go through the, this because that's this, the brain set, the mindset that they tolerate, and the people following them lockstep into environmental and cultural disaster. That is just the beginning of the challenge that collectively we face as, as bipod humanoids on this planet that we really do not tolerate 
this self-induced stupor resulting from alcohol use. So that people are so removed from the common reality that they rely on a network of support systems which at the bottom enslave and, and destroy people's lives as examples to people if you don't get a job, if you don't play this game, if you're not in this ballpark then you're going to be like these poor people. How you the look, how you act, all that, eh? Do you, do you notice that you guys get judged a lot on the way you look? Oh, constantly. Uh, I, I, I hope so. Uh -huh. <laughs> you look like you try and project a certain image, which is to your benefit. It's good. Yes. Essentially, I like people to see me as a happy, easy-go-lucky, kind man. Yeah. Right. It's, you yeah. know, and I, I try to express that because that's what I am. That's what exactly. I. Exactly. That's why I serve the Lord that way. You know. It's well, it wouldn't do any, you any good to look any other way. Well, that's I was trying to disguise myself. Huh. Well, well, I'm not talking about you. But yeah. Well. Anyway, uh, more discussion later then. <laughs> Give me that, Give me that. Harry, say a few words here to our viewers here. A few words to our viewers here. Thank you for listening to These People Talk on marijuana and other subjects. We'll come back with another episode in a future week. <laughs> uh, see you when I see you. I might be here, I might not be. Have a good day. Nice. Thank you, everybody.